In this video, we'll take a look at conditional statements, biconditional statements, and logical equivalents. And we'll start first with conditional statements, which form the backbone of most mathematical statements, mathematical literature, theorems, um, everything in the research world. Most things are boiled down to conditional statements. So first of all, we need a couple of statements. So let's say let P and Q be statements. They could be any statements. And these two things will be the ingredients for what we call the conditional statement. So here is what the conditional statement is in terms of how we say it. We could say if P then Q, that's considered a conditional statement. Or other ways of saying the exact same thing are P and then this arrow is actually red implies Q. Or we could just say P implies Q. It's a little confusing because we have three different things that are all claimed to be the conditional statement, um, but they're all meaning the same thing. They're just different ways of saying the same thing. And so we know from previous videos that if we want to actually understand what the conditional statement is, then we have to define it by a truth table. So let's make that truth table. And since the conditional statement P implies Q, this is kind of the most concise way to write it, so that's what we'll use. Since that has two ingredient statements, we need four rows. And that's these four possibilities. And this is how we define the conditional statement. When P and Q are both true, the conditional statement itself is true. When P is true and Q is false, the conditional statement is false. And in both other cases, the conditional statement is true. So this is not only the truth table of the conditional statement, it's the definition. So a conditional statement <coughs> has several statements that are um, derived from it or related to it. And so the first statement is called the converse if okay so we're we're considering now our original statement is p implies q then we get a few other statements that we can define based on this original statement the converse is where you switch the direction so this is q implies p the inverse which is not often used so we won't take too deep of a look at this is not P implies not Q. And this one has a fancy name called the contrapositive is not Q implies not P. So again, these are all derived from this original statement, P implies Q. And we just give them names because they're rather common. Um, like I said, the inverse is not as common, but converse and contrapositive those are used all the time. So again, converse is obtained from the original by just switching the order. Inverse and contrapositive involve either switching the order and negating both terms or simply negating both terms. So these are all derived from the original statement. And um, let's define also the biconditional. And the biconditional looks like this, P double arrow Q, which is often read P if and only if Q. And we can define that with the truth table as well. And so since it has two inputs, its truth table looks like this. So P if and only if Q is going to be true when P and Q both have the same truth value. They could both be true or they could both be false. And in all other cases the biconditional is false. And this is often what we use for logical equivalence. If, if they both have the same truth values then those two statements would be called logically equivalent. So that's worth writing. Two statements are logically equivalent.
when they have the same truth values. And that means for any case they have to have the same truth values. So I want to give you an example of two statements that are logically equivalent and then I want to prove to you based on truth tables that they are logically equivalent. So I'm going to make a claim and my claim is going to be that P implies Q and not the logical and but this is part of the sentence not Q implies not P are logically equivalent. And if you just want to give yourself a little pop quiz, if this is the original statement, what is the name of this statement? You can pause the video right now if you want to test yourself. And if you don't want to test yourself, I'll just tell you it's called the contrapositive. So the claim is that the conditional statement and its contrapositive are logically equivalent, which means that logically they're the same thing. They're both either true or, e or false. Their truth values never differ. And the way I'm going to prove this to you is through truth table. And we'll just notice that they have the exact same uh, columns for their truth table. So again, we have two inputs, so we have kind of our standard by now, um, first two columns. So I think uh, P implies Q we can do first. And remember, we just defined that, so we know that it has this truth table. So notice that this is an implication, and so it's going to follow this general pattern. If we have a true true, a false true, or a false false, for this and then this, then we'll get the same truth values. If we have the first one is true and the second one is false, then we'll get a false value. But what we need are the inputs. We need not Q, and then we need not P. So not Q, we have to look at the Q column. And not Q is going to flip those truth values. So that's false true, false true. And not P is going to flip P's column. And so that's false, false, true, true. So then not Q implies not P. We'll be using this skeleton, this overall structure, but these are our inputs first one, second one. And so not Q implies not P. We examine these two. False implies false. That's a true statement. True implies false. That's a false statement. False implies true. That's a true statement. And true implies true. That's a true statement. And notice that these are the two statements that we're trying to prove are logically equivalent and these are their corresponding columns and they're exactly the same. Thus our conclusion is P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. Or an easier way to remember this is that the original statement if it's a conditional statement, is logically equivalent to its contrapositive. And this seems like a fairly esoteric result, but this is, this is very powerful when you're trying to prove things in mathematics or when you're trying to manipulate logical symbols or statements because now since they're equivalent you can use them interchangeably just like in algebra you can do substitution and logic you can also substitute these in freely because they have the same truth values and that's it for now